All right, Joseph, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, that's just intense. That's gorgeous. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, again, beautiful. These are just fant I, fantastic. What a great start. Okay. A little underdeveloped here. We'll talk about that in a second. I want to talk about typography first. Um, it, great job with your type, by the way. I think that uh, uh, the consistency is fantastic. I'm a little concerned right here. I'm not real sure what typeface you used here. It's, a, it's definitely a geometric sand. Um, uh, probably a gill sand, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. It's hard because it's distorted. And let me describe that to you. When you placed iconic American entertainers in this typeface, it looks like you resized it without constraining the original aspect ratio. Let me describe it a little further. When you set type, okay, so if you set type, you place your type, either set it in a different program and place it here or set it right in Illustrator within the stamp. If you re, if Once you set your type, you click that bounding box for the type. If you want to resize it, you if you grab that, you, know, you, you take the corner bounding box, right? You, you select the type, take the corner bounding box, hold your, your mouse key down and resize it, right? But if you don't hold your shift key down, it's not going to maintain that, constrain the original aspect ratio. So you're going to get a little bit of distortion. I'm thinking this is what happened here. As we take a look at these, the shapes of these letters, they seem a lot taller than they do wide. And I, I, I'm guessing that that may be a, a, what happened. So let me know um, on that. Um, the two typefaces are different. You're using two sans serif typefaces. Um, one is bold and one is... Uh, seems default, but that, that's a pretty good relationship. Um, you might consider using the same. It's really difficult to mix sans serif typefaces or to mix serif typefaces because you want to choose something that has enough differentiation that it's obvious that it's not the same typeface. Uh, but then again, you want there to be some consistency. So it's difficult. That's why uh, uh, um, you might consider, I think, I'm not sure about this relationship. It's hard to tell what the distortions going on in the type here. All right, off to the illustration. Jeannie, where'd you come from? Okay, so Jeannie wasn't in. Okay, uh, Jeannie's not in this presentation. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the individual. Um, this is really great. R great start. I would recommend a little bit more contrast in some areas, specifically um, the mouth area, meaning that you might lighten up the color of his lips a little bit, as right now they seem to blend in with the skin tone. And I think it will get out a little bit more compelling. Um, nostrils seem a little bit light, too. You might, might want to darken those up. Other than that, this is really, really fantastic. Um, I think the skin tone itself might be a little bit dark. Um, don't forget, this is a series. Now, you've heard me mention this before. There should be some consistency um, in the presentation of skin tone, being that this is a series, right? So um, this skin tone here should be closer to Martin Sheen's skin tone, which should be closer to Brando's skin tone. Of course, not an applicable, right? But the three um, that have common skin tone should be very, very common. Uh, again, it, they're not going to show as common or like in the in, in photography because there's so many different variables in photography. But I would definitely say that you want to take some 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 liberties with the skin tone. Again, mouth area a little bit underdeveloped. Um, again, maybe take some 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 liberties here and add some color to the lips here. Well, let's finish let's finish this one first, and now we'll move on. One other thing I see is it's got it's got the hat on right. And the hat is, right now, I think the emblem on the hat is, is to a high degree, uh, an identifying factor of this, this image. You may consider reducing the size of this so we can get that emblem in there uh, so it's not obscured by forever. Also, the light source is coming from the above left, as we can see on the shadow, on the glasses based on the, uh, uh, the shadow from the, the hat on the glasses, and also the shadow on the neck right here. But... The shadow is not on the forehead as it should be. It's bright, so the, the shadow is coming across here, but it's not depicted in the skin tone here. So that whole area should be just a little darker, indicating the shadow created by the brim of the hat. Okay, next, uh, Martin Sheen looks great. I would recommend adding a little bit of, of contrast to the eyes, maybe even darken up that area a little bit, it's like he's wearing eyeliner, and then consider maybe even adding a little eyelashes there. Um, detailing the lips color there. Uh, a little bit of color there. Um, lips are not the same as skin tone, and they're not the same hue as we know. So it would it would theoretically stand a reason to add some some uh, value uh, to the uh, some 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 color value to the the lip area itself. 
um, maybe a contour line depicting the nose so that we see this at a distance. You'll see uh, that that's, that's the shape of the nose because at a distance, you won't see this subtle variation here between shadow and highlight. It's a, it's a game of chess, really. Um, if you go too far on the tonal variation between shadow and highlight, you are risking the characters looking like they're wearing face paint. If you don't go um, a, a, enough contrast, you'll lose the, the shadow highlight depiction based on the fact that these are stamps and they will be viewed at a distance. So it, again, it's a tough chess. It's a tough chess match, and it's one of the reasons why we use this this assignment. Okay, hair. Let's get some shadow highlight detail texture in the hair. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. This is great. Love it. Love it. I can see this scene in my head just looking at this image. Again, the mouth area, more contrast there. Uh, you might even get some reflections in the glasses. And really got some great glasses going on over here, but maybe something a little bit more detailed here. Again, we're just pointing to a little bit of a lack of contrast here. It could be due to the background color, too. You've got dark, very dark, and very dark. So you might consider that as well. Um, wow, that is just gorgeous. Good job. And then this one, I'm boy, this one's a little problematic. I, I remember, I mean, this is such an iconic portrait, but it's 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 difficult because of that. The term is chiaroscuro, and that means it's a very high high degree of contrast between the subject and its background. We see it a lot in 1930s movies. Um, uh, noir, noir, film noir it was all filmed in a chiaroscuro um, a method. So. I, I, I get it. It's difficult. You've done a great job over here, but boy, I'm just not sure about this area right here. I think we need further development here, mouth area further development. Um, other than that, I think it's, it's a really good start, but I'm not real sure how you're going to go ahead and address this, but I, I consider this to be a little bit problematic. It's a tough choice. I mean, it's a tough, tough task here uh, because half of the, the, the portrait is in shadow. I mean, deep, deep shadow. Um, so you might, again, take some artistic merit and, and try to develop this side a little bit further. All right. Really fantastic start. I can't wait to see this one come to fruition. So if you have any questions at all, you want to run anything by me between now and Sunday, have at it. I'll be here. All right. Thanks, Joe. Great start.